Greetings, Eric back at Naturopath. Thank you for coming back to my channel. I've got an interesting question here from a subscriber called Tim Hughes. And Tim is asking me, Eric, I like your videos. Would you consider doing a video on joint and muscular, musculoskeletal pain and how this is related to gut dysfunction? I would love to hear your thoughts. Well, Tim, it's a very good question, and that's why I'm doing a video. I don't often do videos like midweek like this, but this is a really good question, and it's a question I've been asked many, many times, so it's time to respond. About 30% of people approximately, according to lots of studies I've read, suffer from what we call metabolic endotoxemia. Now, that's not some new planet they've discovered or some you know weird kind of American sitcom or whatever. What that word means, metabolic endotoxemia, it means you've basically got junk inside your bloodstream floating around that doesn't belong there, that belongs in your gut. So you may well have heard of the term leaky gut syndrome, okay? So leaky gut syndrome is also called intestinal permeability, which about one in three people have on average. Meta the um, leaky gut is a precursor to many different types of diseases. In fact, we believe it's a precursor to a lot of diseases like cancers, diabetes, heart disease, lots of different diseases. Most diseases have their root cause, their root origin in inflammation, okay? So inflammation is considered the mother of all causes of most disease. If we can really understand how to stop inflammatory problems inside the body, we can stop a lot of disease from happening. And one of the things that medicine is finally starting to discover is intestinal permeability. Now, many scientific websites will deny this, but I can show you now at least a hundred studies I've got on my computer, uh, you know, from many different universities and even the Mayo Clinic. Many people now admit that there is intestinal permeability. So the first 75 millimeters or three inches of the small intestine or the duodenum is approximately where 65% of the body's entire immune system resides. You may have heard about that. Immunity is primarily in the gut. Now, if we can keep that small bowel from being permeable to keep actually, you know, the contents inside the small intestine and not have anything leaking out or translocating into the bloodstream, you know, through the lymphatics, we can really help to solve a lot of problems for people. So let's talk about stuff called LPS or lipopolysaccharides, okay? So lipo being fat and polysaccharides are kind of sugar. Many different types of bacteria, okay, have got these little things on the surface, okay, of their cell called LPS. LPS is part, really, of the makeup of the cell. <clears throat> but when the bacteria dies, LPS can cause a real problem. LPS can translocate through the small intestine into the lymphatics for many different reasons. But lipopolysaccharide uh, inflammatory conditions are very, very well known. You can go to Wikipedia or Google and type in LPS and you'll read all about that. So what we want to do is prevent perme this intestinal permeability. And a great way to do that is to not take antibiotics. They're the worst thing for the small bowel. I've said this over and again in all my videos that one day antibiotics will be seen as one of the dumbest mistakes they ever made in Western evidence-based scientific medicine. Not now, not next year, not in five years, but probably in 20, 50, or 100 years from now. So I really encourage people not to take antibiotics. I really encourage you not to do that unless you have a very, very strong reason to take that. For example, like a, a, a septicemia or a serious blood disease. Uh, you know, if you've got, for example, pneumonia or meningitis, <clears throat> excuse me, like a chronic infection, well, it's a no brainer. You're not going to argue, you're going to get the intravenous antibiotics. But many people get antibiotics for reasons <clears throat> that are not so important. I, my Israeli patient I've mentioned several times on YouTube now was on antibiotics for 12 months. I mean, how dumb is that? That's just such a stupid thing to do, you know, as a medical profession to put someone on an anti-drug for so long. These are the things that destroy the gut. They trash it. I mean, you might as well give the guy Novacek. Look up Novacek. Those two people, unfortunately, got you know poisoned in England by that Russian agent. I mean, to me, you're almost sort of getting into Novacek kind of territory when you're going on a whole year on antibiotics. Now, I know I'm raving on here, but we want to prevent intestinal permeability. Let's look at some of the ways to prevent it. Alcohol. It's a key thing that helps to destroy the gut of many people. Many pharmaceutical medications. 
proton pump inhibitor drugs, you know, for example, PPI drugs to block stomach acid. There are a whole raft of drugs that affect the intestinal permeability. Bad diets, high stress, caffeine, lots of different things. So the more we focus on improving our diet with very good quality vegetables, fruits, lean meats, all the stuff you know you should eat, we're going to help strengthen up the bacterial, you know, the microbes in the gut are going to get strong in the small intestine. And that's also going to allow the cells lining the duodenum to become plump and fat and block out, you know, any ability to create a gap there where stuff can leak through, uh, through to the other side. So a very powerful gut generally precludes inflammation. A weak gut ensures inflammation. Inflammation in the gut then can turn towards the body when it escapes, it gets out there. So now the immune system is going to ramp up its response and it generally won't be okay, the front end of the immune system, it'll be the back end. All right? It won't be the cell mediated neutrophil response, which is what happens with bacterial infections or cuts and stuff. It's going to be the humoral response or the back end okay, involving all kinds of white cells. And these are the things that help to ramp inflammation up because they're going to produce chemicals, lots of different chemicals. You may have heard of words like interleukin, okay, chemo, um, uh, I think it's tumor necrosis factor, uh, interleukins. So these cytokines basically, you know, these are going to communicate with each other and with the white cells. They're going to ramp up inflammation. And when inflammation ramps up, you get pain, pain in the joints, pain in different parts of the body. So we talked about lipopolysaccharides, and these guys get attacked. They can get attacked. They're one of the prime, one of the two main bacterial uh, endotoxins, uh, LPS. So once these get into the bloodstream, for example, the immune system is going to attack them. They're going to get involved in a broil, right? And now all of a sudden we've developed a situation where we've got an immune, an immune system component, a cell attacking something that doesn't really belong there. And then other stuff runs, you know. Let's say you've got a fight with two men on the street. Police get involved, but the fight ramps up. Now we're getting the armed defender squad in there, okay. And, and that doesn't work. Oh, let's get in the, the, the National Guard. Let's drop bombs on everything, okay. Let's just blow the whole lot up. That's inflammation. It starts like striking a match, and eventually it's a forest fire. And you've got systemic inflammation. And that's when you need drugs to quell the inflammation, which wreck the gut and keep the whole cycle going. All right. And I've often said, I can't really call it the healthcare system. I call it the sickness maintenance industry. Because when you get on that drug merry-go-round, you're forever going to develop leaky gut, inflammation, leaky gut, inflammation. And then forevermore, you're taking drugs to stop the pain, but the drugs increase the permeability. I'm always trying to get people not to take pharmaceutical medications. Um, you know, things like popping paracetamols for a headache, popping ibuprofen for knee pain, popping this for that, you know. And, and once you start popping these things for symptoms, that's often the beginning of intestinal permeability. So don't trash your gut. Love your gut. Respect it. Eat the foods that build up the wall of the small bowel. Don't take things that destroy the integrity of it. That's going to guarantee inflammation. I'm 60. I've got no inflammation anywhere in the body. Well, I'm 59 but no pain anywhere. I expect when I get to my 90s to have no pain anywhere in my body. And that's because I love my small intestine. I treasure it. I eat the right foods. I understand the factors that build up the small bowel and the factors that break down the small bowel. When you understand that one principle alone and you really care for your small intestine as much as you would care for your wife or your Porsche or your house by the beach or your tent in the park or whatever you've got, when you care about your body to a very deep extent, you're going to have a very nice retirement. When you have got lack of knowledge and no understanding of your body, you know, we're not blaming anybody here. When you take pharmaceutical medications to make you better, it's not a good idea. The main aim of pharmaceutical industry is to have most people by the time they're 70 on two pharmaceutical drugs. That's not me talking. I've heard drug reps saying exactly that, right? two drug reps I heard speaking. And when I interjected, one man turned to me and said, Eric, it's our aim as a company to have people on two pharmaceutical drugs by the time they're 70. I said, oh, hang on a minute. Isn't the aim of medicine to get people well and better and off medications? And this guy just turned around and walked off. So it's your call. It's your call, okay? 
So Tim, if you really have got musculoskeletal pain or inflammation now, why not do a comprehensive stool analysis with your integrated medical doctor or naturopath? Find out what type of bugs you've got in your gut, and often you'll find bugs like Citrobacter frondi, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, you know, bugs like that. They'll be there in a high count, three or four plus. Take them out. Get rid of the bugs that are imbalanced. Clean it up. Boost up your beneficial count. Eradicate yeasts. Get rid of parasites. Eat the right kind of food. Now, there are nearly 1,300 videos on this channel. There's more than enough stuff there I've placed, not just for today, but also for future for you to look at. So this is going to help you to repair that small intestine. Once you've repaired the gut and we start getting rid of all those circulating immune complexes in, in the bloodstream that are you know, shadow boxing your immune system, once we get rid of those guys, your inflammation is going to go down, down, down. I had a patient in New Zealand with very, very bad rheumatoid arthritis. A stool test revealed massive amounts of dysbiosis in the gut, and she had dental problems. I urged her to go to a dentist. They found three diseased root canal teeth which they extracted. The gut was cleaned up. Within 12 months, the patient was off methotrexate, and the inflammation went from 9 down to about a 1. And you can do it too. Anyone can do it. If you don't want pain, in your body, fix up your gut. That's the message from this video. I hope that answers some of your questions. But this is a topic I'm passionate on. I could speak for a whole afternoon on various factors that account for intestinal permeability and how to repair it. This is just a snippet of information. Don't forget the lipopolysaccharides. Okay, that's an important one. Don't forget the fact that you need to eat really good food regularly and often. Alcohol destroys the gut, so do drugs. Pure water. Good food builds it, and stress is another factor. So give me some feedback, and thanks for the question. I appreciate it, Tim.